Welcome to the Backstage Whataburger Studios. My name is Nick Russo, Tin Man Jam 2017. It's my pleasure to welcome back to Houston one of the most talented songwriters, musicians, and singers, and bartenders, and dads you've ever met, <laughs> Chris Jansen. How you doing, man? <laughs> very well. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome well, this back. quite an intro. Hey, it um, is. May I say that Whataburger, I just had one last week. This is my, that's my favorite uh, burger joint. They would love to hear that. They, well, I'm glad that, that they're hearing it right now, and I'm proud to be in the Whataburger Lounge with you and... Uh, Wow, man, what a great day this is, huh? Well, it's amazing, man. And, you know, the, my memory of you forever will be at the Pasadena Bull Bashes a couple years ago, and you mm -hmm. had a kick drum, a mm -hmm. harmonica, a guitar, and the microphone all in front of you. And there may have been another instrument that I'd left out. No, that you probably got it right that time, but tonight I actually br did bring an extra instrument. I brought a piano and that same setup plus a piano. And so um, just going to be playing, of course, the hits that people know. Uh, by the way, thanks for Fix a Drink recently. And, um, that, man, we're just flying high on that, and we're about to get this new single out, uh, you know, next week called Drunk Girl, which I'm going to be debuting tonight here in town on the piano. And uh, so, you know, I just play a lot of stuff because I like to play music, and it's just kind of what I do, you know. You know, you talk about Drunk Girl. I listened to the whole album um, over the past week, and I spent a lot of time with everyone's albums, you know. Yeah. Um, and that one came to mind, especially with the culture of what's going on right thanks. now. Um, and it spoke to a a – less mature version of myself you could say <laughs> because uh not to spoil it but you're basically saying you want to, the test of a man is if he takes a drunk girl home whether he knows her or not what he does when they get home yeah. says more about him than it does anything else yeah i think it's a moral standard kind of piece and um you know it's just i don't think you know in the world you can never have enough good information and i mean it, you know it goes a long way with people and so I think it's a good message to be out there i wrote it from a father's perspective first of all and and foremost because i have two daughters and two sons and you know if my daughters were ever in that situation i would hope that a young man would treat them with equal respect that you know that we wrote into the song and and you know it was funny uh, and ironic about the whole situation is you know we wrote it before all this in, before the times got to where they are in in the world and and in the media and things you know we wrote the songs before that so it's just kind of just perfect storm timing you know with it and we just thought it just felt right and so here we're coming with it well and it totally does and you know that's Thanks. one of those things where it's like the universe just kind of put itself organized itself just the way it was supposed to be yeah that's yeah, right um keith urban you know he has his song female that just yep. came out kind of speaks to the same notion yeah, i love the song by the way um now so uh you you mentioned fix a drink what what is the uh reaction like on tour from the fans when you, you crank it up it's really good i mean it you know it, i told people from the beginning that it it had, you know, I, I say that songs are sort of symptomatic, and you can, if you, you get sort of a subculture with songs like Buy Me a Boat, and then you sort of build your own little brand and audience, and you start building off of that, and Fix a Drink really played into that culture, and it's play, it was just such a universally fitting song for for majority of people in the world, you know, they, they live the Fix a Drink kind of story, and so it's amazing listening to people sing it, it's amazing you know, it being my second number one, it, it, it was a, my fastest rising single to date, and um, it just worked. It just, again, if you write real songs for real people, you know, real people relate to them, and, and um, fixing a drink is pretty much what all my buddies do on Friday afternoons and, and every day after work, and, and so we just thought, well, we'll try it and see what happens, and that's kind of how I do all my songs. I just write them because I like them first, and hopefully other people do, and once it got on the radio, man, it just started really popping, and, and people were singing that song. When I first started playing it months and months and months ago, people were singing it before it was ever on the radio, which I, you know, I kind of had a telltale sign symptomatically of a hit, you know. No, totally, man. Now, uh, you so much family at home. Christmas is right around the corner. You're going to yeah. get a little bit of break from touring. Do you all have uh, big plans uh, for Christmas? Do you all do something every year? I actually wish uh, we don't. You know, it's, I'm thankful to have a job. So it's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. You can either take time off, and then you can easily be forgot about, or you can just blow right through it and so we're like plowing right through it with work but we're taking a few days off here and there i mean i mean traditions for tradition's sake i mean we just have everybody at our house finally i mean we have a place that that can sustain having more than just a couple people and uh i'm proud of that i, I really enjoy having all the family and cousins uh brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws and and in-laws and, and outlaws and everybody in you know at the house but we just cook we get some deep fried turkeys and just sort of uh it, we're basically like thanksgiving all over again except we just give a lot of presents but you know i'm, a, I'm like one of those people who's an awkward gift getter like i don't like getting stuff but i love giving it and so you know um like my mother-in-law is always she's like you, I, i'm worried about you, you sh i mean i say look don't worry about me i like to give gifts i don't i just feel weird getting stuff you know but um that's what we do we we pile it up full of uh what what we think our friends and family need or, or you know and, and some wants in there and then just try to make it all about the kids first and foremost and 
Santa comes, I hope he's coming anyway. And uh, for anybody out there listening, yes, I'm a believer. And it's uh, you it's pretty mirac- to receive. Well, you, that's the bottom line. It's that's the only way. That's the only way it is. Period. And uh, he's coming at my Christmas party. I'm pretty sure. And then he'll probably make a trip back during Christmas. You, and, and you know, and the idea of gift giving or gift receiving, I'm to the point now where I actually love yep. socks and sweatpants. Oh, really? I love that stuff. Socks and sweatpants. I uh, I hear Sam Hunt bleeding into our thing. That's I do a too. Good, that's a good friend of mine. I'm gonna I probably love get him song, a nice though. pair of socks for Christmas. And um, yeah, I like. Okay. Speaking of socks, I buy my own socks. When people have bought me socks in the past, I get super weirded out. Like I can't, I am just I'm real weird like that. Mm-hmm. I get Under Armour socks from TJ Maxx. <laughs> Dude, I, I bought Calvin Klein underwear for the first time yesterday. TJ Maxx. I know that. Yeah. Well, no, Nordstrom is that Rack? is that yeah Nordstrom Rack? That's what it was. It blew my mind, man. What's I, up, dude? I, I know. I was I know like, what's here up. I am buying. I never thought I would make that conversion because I was always just like, oh, whatever, those look good, you know. But now I'm like Mm-mm, picking no. out money. No, you gotta be. Look, <laughs> look. It don't matter how. If you want to put it in a basis of being real country or real, you know, city or whatever, man, you got to like, you got to take a little pride in your under drawers and your socks. I mean, it's an important thing. Like, I, I get boot socks all the time, right? And so what I mean by that is, like, you get sweaty on stage and you get boot sock and it's just nasty. I'd really just throw socks away and just get new ones. I mean, if you can afford to get socks, you're having a pretty good day. So I figure let's go to TJ Maxx and have a heyday. That's right. I'd rather have a fresh pair of socks every day than a Dude, Under Armour socks, n- size 9 to 12. Seven bucks a pack. So aside from the socks, how are you feeling about tonight? I'm feeling really good. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me back. Really appreciate it on, on behalf of you and everybody at the station. And um, I'm looking forward to it, man. You know, it's you you go through a lot of years coming up through this business, and, and it's certainly as an artist and growing as an artist, and you you know you do things like this years ahead before you ever have a number one song, before you ever have a hit song. Period. And you know, and then once you get one one number one song, and then you know, you, you keep building that thing, and, and you're like, all right, cool, and then, like, it's like you, you play a lot of these things, or, or any kind of show for that matter, and and you, you, you it's like the pinnacle is that one number one. Well, now I got a couple of those, and then I got a couple of big hits on some other artists that I wrote for, and it, that makes it, it's a huge blessing, and, and I say that with a with a humble heart. Like, I, it makes it a lot funner for me to play, because, you know, you have something worthwhile to play for people that that, that they've actually heard. Yeah, and, you're not uh, brand new awesome. thrust throwing it at the wall. Exactly. Like, man, I hope they like this. Exactly. You know they love it. Yeah, yeah, exa- exactly. And I don't care who you are, that can be awkward sometimes. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for those opportunities. And, and all I ever wanted to be was on the on the radio, you know, having hit songs. And so I'm getting to do that. And now I'm just getting to play them directly to the faces that listen through the speakers in the car. Man, God is good. Thank you so much Amen. for being here, Chris. Thank we you, appreciate bro. it. And this is uh, Chris Jansen, 10-Man Jam with 100.3, The Bull.